Hello, my name is Jim Lucan. I'm a biology professor in the Gupta College of Science. Today, I'm going to be talking about and actually showing you what some people consider the most amazing and wonderful plant in the world. Now, I know most people and probably most students at Coastal think plants are boring. But the plant I'm going to talk about today is anything but boring, and some people consider it the least boring plant of all the thousands of plants that occur on the planet. So let's talk about what makes this plant interesting and not boring. Well, first off, here's a boring plant. This is a typical grass. Um, if you pull it up out of the ground, you shake the soil off of the bottom of it, what we see down here, of course, is a system of roots. Most plants, of course, have this system of roots underground, and the primary function of these roots is to take up water and nutrients from the soil. That's what most plants do. However, there's a category of plants that takes an alternate approach to that, and they actually capture insects for their nutrition, and we call them carnivorous plants. And probably the most famous, and again the most wonderful of all the carnivorous plants that exist on the planet is this one right here in the pot, and it's of course the Venus flytrap. Now about this carnivory in plants, there's a variety of different species of plants that have taken on the habit of carnivory. There are pitcher plants, which catch insects in leaves modified as funnels. There are sundews that have little sticky hairs for capturing insects. But the Venus flytrap is the most advanced of all the carnivorous plants because it uses something called a snap trap, an active trap that when an insect, such as this cricket, crawls across the lobes of the trap. The trap snaps shut, traps the insect in there, and then dies a slow death as the plant secretes enzymes to digest the insect and get those nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus out of the insect. I have some fly traps here that are ready and waiting for a insect. I have a unfortunate little cricket here that's going to sacrifice itself for our video, and now I'm going to let the flytrap eat the cricket, so watch carefully. Oh, it missed. <laughs> so, in this little experiment that we just did, the experiment of cricket versus Venus flytrap, in this case, Cricket one, And this, of course, opens up a really interesting thing about Venus flytraps that uh, we've been studying for a number of years. Uh, for example, are these traps really good and efficient at catching insects, or are they kind of dumb traps? If I look at this little pot of Venus flytraps here, I see some that have caught insects. I see some that are closed but didn't catch any insects. And I see others that are actually closed on a leaf of its neighbor. And so this, of course, raises the question, just how good are these at catching insects? And more interestingly, just exactly which insects do they catch most often? Now I know what you're thinking. Big deal, Venus flytraps in a flower pot. Actually, it is a big deal. Many people have Venus flytraps in a flower pot. And indeed, this particular plant in a flower pot occurs around the world. People buy them in stores, botanical gardens put them on display. They're found in movies and actually in plays. It's such a unique carnivorous plant, everybody wants their own pet Venus flytrap. However, I bet there's one thing that you did not know. I bet you did not know that this particular plant grows in the wild very close to Coastal Carolina University 
And if you want to, you can actually see it growing in the wild, but it will take a little bit of effort on your part. Come on, let me show you where it grows, and maybe you too can go there and see it growing in the wild. So here we are at one of the few places in South Carolina where you can still see Venus flytraps growing in the wild. Actually, this is becoming one of the only places where you can see them growing in the wild. We are here at Lewis Ocean Bay Heritage Preserve, which is just a few miles from the campus of Coastal Carolina University. This particular state-owned heritage preserve is about 9,000 acres. And of course, the question is, why Venus flytraps here? Venus flytraps require a really unique type of habitat, sort of wet, sort of dry, but right at the edge of a kind of wetland called a Carolina Bay, or what some people call a Pocosin. And so if you're looking for Venus flytraps here, you want to go to open grassy areas, they require a lot of sun, and you want to look at the edges of the wetlands. And so that's why we're here, and we're going to go see some Venus flytraps. So here we are at one of the places where Venus flytraps are reported to live. Now, if you look behind me over here, you'll see it's one of the open sort of grassy areas called a savanna. Um, I know for a fact that over to my right, it's kind of wet, kind of a wetland situation. Over to my left, it's a little bit drier. And so somewhere in between there is good habitat for Venus flytraps. So we're gonna walk across this area and we're gonna try to find them. Uh, the problem with Venus flytraps is they're really difficult to find. Um, they're very rare. There's very few of them that occur out here, but when you find them, it is quite amazing. And I will say that out here at Lewis Ocean Bay, you will see some of the biggest Venus flytraps that most people ever see in their life. So let's go see if we can find some. As I've told you before, they're really hard to find. You just have to keep looking and looking, and sometimes, sometimes they're just hidden down in the grass, and like, oh, oh wow, it's a really big one, and he's actually clamped onto my boot. Just wait, just wait, okay. Oh, this is a big one, this is gonna be great. I've learned how to pry the traps open. So, so just wait just a second here, okay, wait. Oh, oh. Whoa, man, is that a big one. Be careful when you come out here. All right, so we've been looking for Venus flytraps for a little while. They're really hard to find. We have 9,000 acres and uh, a very few number of populations of Venus flytraps. But once again, you uh, do your searching in these sort of open grassy areas. And in these open grassy areas, you look for little openings or little pockets, oftentimes that are very wet. And they've got this bright green moss that grows on the ground. And as you're walking along, paying very careful attention, whoa, almost fell down the water here, paying very careful attention to the ground. And you look down, and there they are. Right there, a nice population of Venus flytraps growing in the wild. This is what we came here to find. People have traveled from all over the world to come to this place to see this plant growing in the wild. 
This small little population of Venus flytraps is typical of what occurs out here at Lewis Ocean Bay. They're very widely spaced, they're very rare, and of course the first thing you should notice is they're very, very small. See the size of the trap relative to my finger? Most people think Venus flytraps are much larger than this. They aren't. They're very, very small. And at this particular time of the year, the traps, the mouths of the traps are bright red and the rest of the plant is bright green and they're actually pretty easy to see. And as you look at this little population of plants, just like in the pot behind my house, some of the traps are closed, some of them are open, some of them are closed on leaves, and if we look carefully we can actually see some of the dead insects in some of these traps. Again, wet area. The, the ground is literally sopping wet. I'm kneeling in water and it's open to the full sun. This is the kind of habitat where they grow best. So let's go back to that original question I asked. What do Venus flytraps trap? Well you can determine this for yourself by going into the field and looking at the traps that are closed just like this one here in my hand. And oftentimes when you find a tr closed trap, you can carefully peel it open and look inside. And when I do that for this particular trap, what do I find? But I find a dead cricket. Now in this particular case, the cricket lost and the Venus flytrap won. So what is going on here? So what happens is the insect is captured, it's slowly digested by the enzymes the trap releases, and those nutrients in the insect body come out, the nitrogen, the phosphorus, and other things, and the plant absorbs these nutrients, and that's how it gets its nutrition, rather than through roots, which is how most of all these other plants out here derive their nutrition. Now what's the value of this? The value of this, of course, is that this plant and other carnivorous plants can grow in very nutrient-poor habitats. So let's talk about Lewis Ocean Bay Heritage Preserve and its role in conservation. This is a really interesting and unique place. People come from all over the world to visit here and to see the types of plants and animals that occur here. But the question is, of course, what can we and you do to make sure that this very interesting and unique place is here for future generations? Well, let's talk about a few basic rules. First off, when you come out here, and if you do find Venus flytraps, don't stick your finger in the traps, okay? Everybody wants to do that, and each trap has a finite number of openings and closings, and of course, that takes energy. So resist the urge to stick your finger or a stick or anything else in a Venus flytrap. Second, do not dig up the plants. Digging plants, taking plants from here is strictly forbidden. And of course, a person with a little shovel can very easily completely wipe out a population of Venus flytraps. And once you do that, they're gone. Okay. So do not consider or think about taking one of these fly traps home and making it your personal plant pet. And then from a broader perspective, this 9,000 acre preserve is being squeezed on all sides by the commercial and residential development in Horry County. And so there's a lot of concern about how we maintain the integrity of this place, how to best manage it, and how, of course, we keep the impacts of people to a minimum. So if you come out here, and I would urge you to do that, tread lightly, take only pictures, and when you go back to campus, take some good memories of all the cool things you saw out here at Lewis Ocean Bay Heritage Preserve. So I'm Jim Lucan. I'm in the biology department and the Gupta College of Science at Coastal Carolina University. I wish you well this semester, and if you have any questions about anything in this video, just give me a call. Thank you.